We are going to show you all kinds of ways to download and view digital media. I'm going to show you a new way to take pictures just like Billie Eilish. <laughs> Before I round things out with a way to perfectly anonymize yourself and others on your iPhone. It's time, really, for iOS Today! Today! <laughs> iOS Today comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Now that a lot of you are working from home, it's even more important to choose a VPN you can trust. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash iOS Today. I'm excited. Hi. Hey. Hi. Ho. I'm hey. excited. I'm Micah Sargent. I'm Leo, Leo Laporte. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Why are you so excited, stripey, stripey shirt guy? Called iOS today. Um, I'm excited because I think that we cover uh, in different ways. We've talked a lot about streaming apps and yes. and uh, video type of media, so television and movies and things like that. Uh, whether we're talking about things that make us laugh or we are covering, you know, sort of the media that we consume. That gets a lot of focus, but what I think doesn't get a lot of focus are the different apps and services out there that let you uh, download and view and enjoy digital media that is not uh, sort of the, the television and movie stuff. And so this episode is meant to completely focus on those other sort of undercovered categories. So in and the words of your mom, in the words stop of watching TV and Go outside with your iPad? With your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Go get some screen time outdoors. Yes. Stop getting so much <laughs> moving screen time. Less moving screen time. Keep those screens <clears throat> not refreshing. Mom didn't like it when I read comics, I have to say. Re Did you read comics, really? No, they didn't. They weren't invented yet when I was. Okay, a that's kid. not. It's not where I was going with that. I just. I remembered you talk because it was. No, I wasn't a comics like, buff like Andy Anaco really... or Renee Ritchie. Those guys are nuts. <laughs> Those are real They're comic nuts. nerds. Yeah, I'm not a comic nerd, but I read comics. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What about it? Yeah. What of it? I read comics. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know my life. You don't know my comics. You don't know my. You don't know my life. So, what, what comics did you read or cons? What do you even say? Do you read comics or do you consume comics? You know, I I just read a book about how to read comics. <laughs> this is what I'm <laughs> saying. That's how hard it is. You got to read a book about it before you can read comics. Because do you read it? Do you view it? What do you do? You scan it? Do you bop it? Do you twist it? How how do you do comics? <laughs> That's a really good question. I just don't know. I just don't know. But the know. book helped you, right? Yeah. I mean, the book helped me understand that comics are a fine art form. They are not just for kitties. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you how you might say, oh, well, I can. I don't need any special comic program. I can just go on my, you know, on my uh, iBooks on the iPad and just read <laughs> comics. Whoa. Yeah, and sure you can, and I guess you could by hand go like this, yeah, like some sort or of you animal. could make it small, or you could tilt it this way, or you could, <laughs> see, this is the problem. So I don't recommend iBooks at all for reading comics. <laughs> Just in general. In general. Well, you know what, <laughs> I, I, can, you know I, what I do use iBooks for, which is kind of actually funny. Is um, PDFs. Oh, How do we get out of this? How do I get out of this? <laughs> You're trapped. I'm trapped in the comic book <laughs> of my own world. creation. I like keeping my owner's manuals exactly. in my books. So I use collections and I keep all of my uh, like photography manuals because every time I get a camera, I got a new thing to read. See, uh, isn't that yeah. so great? Anytime I get a, any new product, I, like I immediately go online, find yeah. the PDF for it, and then I can yeah, now they recycle. Have, exactly. Um, now they manual. have PDFs. Yeah. So... And yeah, I don't, I, I don't want the, I don't want the paper uh, thing. I just want, I just want the PDF. And then it's always the other thing is always on your you can phone. Search it. 
and oh. it's searchable. Uh, you always have it with you. So I do. That's one thing I do like iBooks for. It, one thing I do not like iBooks for is comic books. So let me show you the best one and only true way. And I actually know this only because I asked a comic book person okay. to read comics on the iPad. It's called Comicsology. So yeah, here's the thing about Comicsology: you can buy comics in it now. For a while, you couldn't because Amazon. But uh, you, can, I think you can now. But the other thing that I love is they often have deals. They have uh, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, so this is the discovery. It's kind of like, really, it's kind of like a bookstore, but for comic books. They even, when it's free comic book day, they even mm -hmm. do free comic books, which I really, in fact. Here's, oh, now that's fun. Yeah. In fact, there's always free comics. Um, just so if you, like, want to see what it's like, Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtle kind of. <laughs> thing. Uh, but then there's also your library. Uh, and you were just showing us your library. I was uh, I was reading The Watchmen uh, because um, I was watching on HBO and I couldn't understand what the heck was going on. Yeah, that really does require some yeah. prior knowledge, it feels. Yeah, because the, the HBO show is like the successor to the original. It's like a continuation. It's a sequel. So I said, I'm going to read The Watchmen. And then when I said that, all the comics nerds like Renee Ritchie and Andy Anako and even Amy Webb said, Amy Webb said that might be one of the greatest novels of all time. I said, Amy, you know, it's a comic. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so, so it's a novel. It's a graphic novel. A but, you know, I, I, I think that that novel. diminishes comic books. So what is it? It's uh, in fact, there's uh, it's I mean, I think it's great. Now, remember, I said how hard it is to read a comic in iBooks. Yeah. Well, we don't have that problem uh, in Comicsology. It's made for comic books. Uh, and by the way, portrait or landscape. That's wonderful. Yeah. And what I really like about it, uh, unfortunately, Watchmen has a lot of, oh, maybe this might even be a book, not the, oh yeah, there it is. It's a comic. What I really like about it is it goes panel by panel. Now, you can double tap and see this is the page. Remember, that's the page we were seeing in iBooks. Mm -hmm. But that's not how you would normally read a comic book. You'd read it in sequential panels. And so this does that for you. And you can just tap and it will zoom. Uh -huh. I really think this is the right way. And also, if you're reading it this way, you get to see the artwork. Come on. Oh, maybe I have uh, rotational capabilities delimited. <laughs> That's an interesting way of saying it, yes. <laughs> Rotational capabilities delimited. Return now. <laughs> return. Return. So this is great. In fact, I, you know, I should really hold it up because look how big that is on a 12.9. Yeah, you right? get so much screen you, there. And though. you get to see the art. Um, and modern uh, uh, graphic novels, comic books, uh, mm -hmm. the art is a little finer than the old days. You know, if you're looking at Superman 1, you're going to see all the all the screening dots. It's not going to be very yeah. high resolution. But nowadays, it's all done digitally, and it really looks... This is actually a remaster of Watchmen, and it really looks good. So, note, by the way, I should show you what just happened, because this is a really good example. It is not just some mindless, let's go frame by frame kind of thing. It is actually... And it must be the publishers that do this, aware of what's going on. So I'm going to go to the next frame. It does a shot of the close-up of the guy, but when I tap it again, it zooms out to bring in the full frame. Ooh, so that's it's, cool. It's kind of aware. It helps guide you it to know yes. what you should do. And that's do. really you one of the keys it. with the comic book is to know, you know how to read it. It even shows you how it's moving through the panels. And when we get to the end of the page, as we will soon... This is such a great uh, comic book. I, I, kind of, I kind of agree with... It's a little too vivid, isn't it? Maybe I should have... Uh, here, we'll get, we'll get down here. Let's go, let's go down here. Because I want to show you how it does this. It's so nice. It really nice. is. It zooms in and out. And I just feel like this is the right way to read uh, comic books. And, and people who are comic fans agree. There were a number of comic book apps out there but comiXology once bought by amazon really became dominant because you could buy your uh, books on uh on amazon you can buy them in the app uh i just really and i think you can buy it in the app now because remember that was the whole thing they didn't want to get yeah. Apple the vig but let me just uh i can never figure out how to get out of these things <laughs> you know? while you're doing that, that i do want to quickly 
I do want to mention Marvel Unlimited because it, it looks it's, like they are imitating the. No, no, they're not. Uh, it's the Comixology engine. <laughs> oh well, there you go. <laughs> it is Comixology. It's just using it's using their engine. They do the same thing. You see exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things uh, right now, you can get a bunch of free issues oh, cool. of Black Panther, of, uh, Black cool. Panther Killmonger. Uh, Shuri, which, oh, I'm, oh, I can't wait to read Shuri. Shuri was one of my favorite characters in that, uh, Black Panther movies. Um, Falcon. I mean, there are lots oh, of I different, uh, free yeah. comics available right now. And so you can download Marvel Unlimited for free with these free comics that are available. Uh, and then for $9.99 a month, you can subscribe to Marvel Unlimited. So it's a subscription service that gives you access to the Marvel. Uh, it says read 27,000 Marvel digital comics uh, for $9.99 a month. So if you're a big comic buff, this is another place to go. If you are not, if you want to go more of the sort of Spotify of comics for out where you pay per month and don't own the comics versus Comixology, which is a great place to build out your library and have those forever. Yeah. So there, there you have it. I mean, that's really, it's the Comixology engine. If you're a Marvel fan, that's a great deal. People like Rene Ritchie own it all. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean. So they, they have, you know, both Comixology because they want to read, you know, DC stuff. And they mm -hmm. want to read Marvel stuff. So there Which you one are you? Are you Marvel? I'm or a DC? DC guy. I don't I think Marvel is a cheap imitation. It's a it's kind of when you get you want rice a roni, but you get rice a rooney. It's <laughs> not it's not the real deal, man. It's just like they could they Superman and Batman were all used up, so they had to invent strange plastic men and things like that. I don't like it. Strange plastic men. Yes. You've heard it here first. Yes. It's Rice a Rooney, not Rice a Roney. I can't wait for this to be clipped as a sort of individual <laughs> moment that will then what? go out. What? Uh, you don't people... agree with me? Are you a Marvel oh, guy? No, no, it's not that I agree or disagree. I have no skin in this mm, game. No disrespect to Mr. Stan Lee, who's a fine gentleman, but uh, give me the dark night anytime. Over any day, any night, umbrella girl or whatever it is that they have. <laughs> umbrella girl. They have. They. They're cheesy. They're cheesy superheroes. They're not real. Okay. They're right. not real. Except gotcha. Doctor Strange, he might be real, but the rest I of them are not real. Doctor Strange is pretty cool. Guy with a bow and arrow. That's not a superhero. Hawkman. Is that, is that arrow? Oh. <laughs> It's not a superhero. Captain. Wait. Okay. Hold Captain on. America Spider wields his mighty shield. You what? don't like Spider-Man, though? Okay, Spider-Man's not so bad. But he ain't I no Batman. So cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's bogus. I can't, Batman I see, just I, jumps off a building. He doesn't need no super web coming out of his fingers. He just jumps. I feel bad because I am not the person to argue against you. And I know there are people out oh, there yeah. right now yelling, who are just screaming. Yelling, yeah. Leo. There's no umbrella girl. That's you made that up. <laughs> umbrella girl. That's from uh, Casey, not DC. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, okay. That, was, that was dumb. Okay. okay. What do you yes, got there? Yes, no, get got. away from the TV. Get outside and read some and comic listen. books. And listen. Oh, I like listening. Listen. I'm a listener. I, more than any other thing in my life, yes. Um, I listen to audiobooks. Uh, I fall asleep. I, I, all right. So I've mentioned this before. I don't have, a, oh, I forgot that I've zoomed in the screen a little bit. So let me not move my head as much. Um, I have mentioned this before, so I don't have a problem talking about it. Uh, when I was in college, I uh, went to a neuropsychologist and went through this whole process and had my brain scanned and all this stuff and was diagnosed with um, ADHD. And so as part of uh, having ADHD, you have this sort of um, buzzy, hyperactive portion of your brain that is kind of uh, always thinking about a thousand different things. And when you are trying to sleep, uh, that part of the brain wants to become more active because it is bored because the rest of you is not doing anything. And so the way that I have found to Wait help myself... Wait a minute. 
does that mean you have like restless brain syndrome? What happens? <laughs> it is like restless brain syndrome. Yeah. So it's interesting because the portion of your brain, the motor cortex, essentially, um, when when you are doing things during the day, whenever you're active uh, and thinking and moving and things like that, it helps to uh, stimulate different portions of your brain that sort of lower the high energy oh. waves that it are in it, that ADHD part. The, the motor pool keeps it activated. It keeps so it, it doesn't get balanced. bored, balanced. Yeah, yeah. And so whenever you're laying still, yeah, it is. I thought restless brain syndrome. That's a good way to put it. Um, anyway, so the way that I sort of combat that, and the way that I find it's easier for me to fall asleep is by listening to something that sort of focuses that part of the brain, while the rest of me can kind of get sleepy and fall asleep. Oh, so you uh, like to what you're long way around? You just like to listen to books while you go to bed. Correct. Yeah. I used to be podcasts. Now, most of the time it's books, books because yeah. I just voraciously yeah. that's word, consume them. So um, I wanted to talk about Audible uh, because I, I know it's been a sponsor of a million deep podcasts. for our shows. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and, and loads By the of way, different we, podcasts. On the we were the first. You hear them everywhere now, but we were the first. There you go. So there, there you go. Uh, so there, huh? Uh, I've been an Audible I, subscriber since the year 2000. Were you even born in the year 2000? Barely. <laughs> Barely born. Okay. There's a lot of uh, energy going on this morning here. Um, no, so I do subscribe, but I also... I have restless brain syndrome. It's not my fault. <laughs> You're right. I love to... One of the things that Audible, uh, given that it is you know part of Amazon, you, they often have deals where if you buy the Amazon version of the book, then you can get the Audible version of the book for less money. And, and sometimes they use whisper sync, which is really cool because you can yes. read along. Actually, it goes back and forth. So you listen and then you can pick up the book on the Kindle. And, and it you can syncs even, it automatically to where yeah, you are. You, you always both go right at the same time. It's awesome. And vice yeah. versa. Yeah. And sometimes you can, some of them, as you're listening, it'll highlight the words. It's really helpful for people uh, who are learning to read, kids who are learning to read and stuff like that. It's really good. I love it. And a pro tip for you, uh, if you are a Kindle Unlimited subscriber, there's a fantastic feature where, so normally you have to, you buy the book, usually these books are about $2.99 on Kindle, and then the Audible version of the book is about $7.49. It's normally $25 to $30, but once you've purchased the Kindle version, then you can get the Audible version for about $7.49. perfect. So you got, for that's, 11 bucks, you got the book both in print in both and forms. audio. Yeah, that's but, great. But if you are a Kindle Unlimited subscriber, mm -hmm. uh, that lets you get books for free. You essentially right. check them out. Right. And if you check out a book, then that counts as you having purchased the book. So you can You're just kidding. pay. And I'm not kidding. You can just pay for the Kindle oh. or for the, the Audible version. So that's, that's what I do because – I tend to listen to a lot of different series that for the most part, it's it's fantasy. Uh, for the most part, it's kind of junk stuff, but it's stuff that I enjoy, magic and fantasy and all that kind of stuff. I can tell um, just by looking at the book covers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so right now I'm listening to the War Mate, or excuse me, the, the Spellmonger series. I think there are about 10 books in the series and uh, they are very good. But I just finished up a series by Rachel Aaron uh, that's part of a, uh, a dragon. Uh, it, it, it's, it combines, what is that called? A, a, it's a fantasy put in modern times, but I can't think of the name of that. There's a specific name for it. Um, but essentially uh, a modern day fantasy where you mix elements of magic with with the future and it really comes That's together cool. quite nicely That's in cool. uh, those series. Uh, anyway, I, I love think though Audible. you'd be able to fall so asleep better with some of my audio books. What do you have? What well, do you for have? instance, I'm really enjoying... Capital in the 21st Century by Thomas Piketty. The social structure and the political equilibrium of European society. You have Infinite Jest on there? Yeah. That, that's, we, that's kind of what, an aspirational book. Look, I've read, I've read a whole like, minute. <laughs> Does anyone know what that book is actually about? Uh, it's a gargantuan mind-altering comedy about the pursuit of happiness in America. That's okay. what I would say. Uh, <laughs> I just finished Shantaram, which is really a wonderful. Oh, don't download it because uh -uh, I just finished it. Uh, yes, I want to cancel it because I just took it off. But uh, these, so I should actually, they've, Audible's changed their uh, uh, interface now. So now you can pick downloaded here. Mm -hmm. You can pick finished. 
I finished a grown up guide to dinosaurs. Ask me anything oh, that about sounds dinosaurs. Fun. Um, that was an audible original. Have you started, have you started partaking in those yet? Yes, I have. Um, I, but you need I like a subscription, don't you or no? Um, I think you can get audible originals for free with a subscription. Yeah. See, I get uh, two, I get two a month for free, which means I'm so far behind now in my listening. Yeah, I know. I, I have, have a two book a month uh, subscription plus two audible originals. I can't, and I don't commute. I listen five minutes a day. <laughs> It's I just add them to my library and I'm like, I'll get to them eventually exactly. when I run out. Cause exactly. I really like series. Uh, I, I will go looking for series and try and listen through, especially if they've all been published. Yes. Um, one of my favorite series right now that, um, I, the, the most recent book just came out, uh, and I'm trying to find it because I, this is one I'd actually recommend to you. Uh, some of these are really goofy and so I'm not going to recommend them to people, but, uh, <laughs> it's called, Oh dear. A Pattern of Shadow and Light by oh. Melissa McPhail. Uh, okay. It's. I'm always it's, looking. I kind of like fantasy, I have to admit. I really love sci fi, but I like fantasy too. So. I'm on the, the sixth strand, Holy which is book cow. five in the series, but the, uh, Melissa McPhail has. I love it when people create not only a world, but a system of magic uh, that then they, you know, require right. their characters to abide right. by. And you start to learn about that system and they go into the history of it. And this is a book that weaves together so many different uh, like history lines and characters. And these characters are so fascinating and they have the strangest names um, like uh, th their, their names for uh, these these beings that are like Shale Abenachtrin. Um, and there are beings that are. They, they spend time as a dragon and then they spend part of the time in human form and they have these long names sort of like uh, Roman gods and, and Greek gods uh, like the the – happiness at the end of the world is what their name translates into in different languages. There's just all these little details that I just love to eat up uh, so much. And Do you, have you ever read any Terry Pratchett? Stuff? I have. Yeah. I love that. That's the whole idea of Terry Pratchett is same thing except comedy. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. In mm -hmm. And Park. that's why I love yeah. uh, like, Terry Pratchett for that, for like sure. The Color of Magic. That's a classic. Good Omens is great with Neil Gaiman. I really mm -hmm. love that one. Um, there's there's so many wonderful Terry Pratchett books. He's passed away, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, boy, there's a lot of Audible for him, too. If you like, same idea. Crazy names, crazy powers, beasts. It's not, it's not in a modern world. It's kind of a more medieval world. Really funny. If you love Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, oh my God. Terry Pratchett's next for sure. And if I, I think you and I both read the uh, Deborah Harkness series, yes, um, yes. A Discovery of Witches, uh, Sh yeah. Shadow of Night, and I can't yeah. remember what the first one was called. Was those called were really Discovery good. Of witches. Oh, that was the first one? Yeah. Yeah, those, my God, I really liked those because it, 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 there are some that genuinely are just junky books that I enjoy uh, listening to. This I, is I, there's a well-written junky book. This, I don't even, I wouldn't even call it that. This one falls outside of the junk in my, in my opinion, because of the, the way that she interweaves science into it. Right, right. It's really beautifully done. Uh, but the junk example, there's a category of book called lit RPG, uh, <laughs> literature <laughs> RPG. Oh. And these books essentially <laughs> combine uh, RPG terms, role-playing game terms, like, uh, you know, you, your character levels over time and you get new powers and things like that. And so at the end of each chapter in many of these books, it'll just do a read down of the person's character sheet, like level six uh, goblin oh, and funny. has these magic spells and things like that. Those books are uh, utter junk, but I can't help but, but listen to them because they're fun. They're all these stories, but, you know, going on these massive adventures and epic uh, tales that get told. And at the same time, you sort of get to watch or listen to the character grow and achieve and get new spells and, and new powers and and things like that and utter trash but they're so fun this is the uh, completely different genre the one i'm reading right now is uh the story of london during the blitz and it's about uh, winston churchill and it's well the reason i'm reading it is because as bad as it is right now 
It was worse <laughs> in London <laughs> at the beginning of World War II when the Germans were bombing every single night. And it's about great leader, great leadership, uh, a plucky, uh, uh, tough people and how they survived just endless, brutally, psychologically devastating night after night bombing. And, and so... I'm really enjoying it. It's a wonderful history. And what's interesting about this, this is by Eric Larson, one of my favorite historians, is uh, there's a lot of dialogue in it, but there's so much been written about that era from people who lived it and who were around Churchill. He says, I don't have to make, at none of, there is no dialogue, there's no scene, there's no even tiny element made up in this. This is, sounds like a work of fiction, but it's not because we have so many memoirs and so many uh, first person witnesses that uh, I could I could actually craft a narrative. It's really wonderful. And it's read by a lovely British fellow. I'll... He had chamber pot through an open window onto Lloyd George. When he was nine years old, Clementine... <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> Just British. my style, yeah, honestly. Very British. And uh, it's history, but uh, it's a very, it's a fascinating piece. Of... So I, I alternate with fiction and nonfiction. I'll d I just finished a book about India, Shantaram, uh, but which, by the way, was given to me by a listener. That's another lo lovely thing about Audible. You can share a book, if you're a subscriber anyway, with a friend. So yeah. I, if, if there's a book that I say, oh, Micah would love this. You can only do it once with a per person. But Micah would love this. You can send it to Micah. And I think it's their way of kind of introducing new people to Audible. But I think it's just great. So somebody sent yeah. me Sean Duran. And uh, thank you. I will find his name because he, he gave me a good book. A good book. A good, good book. Um, good. And then I guess one other recommendation there, uh, the Mistborn series oh, by Brandon are, Sanderson. Yeah, those are supposed to be really good. Yeah. Um, if you haven't yet, no. you should make that your next fiction. I'll, okay. Maybe I'll share the, the first one with you because, oh my goodness, golly gosh. <laughs> um, that was actually, I've re-listened to that series uh, probably three times. They are so good, so intriguing, well, I, I yeah, I'm going to share the first one with you. Then so I didn't know before that you, could you do. Share. Wait a minute, because okay. I might already. Oh, you might have have because I think you've recommended them before. It's called the Final Empire. That's the first one. Okay, it's the Final Empire. It's my God. Um, I I, the, I think I've read other Brandon Brandon Sanderson stuff. Um, it mixes uh, the the interesting side of politics uh, with magic and and uh, war and sort of individual action. And there are so many twists and turns and uh, it's really well done. Well, good. Thank you for the recommendation. Yeah. I do not have it in my library. So oh, good. Uh, if you want to send it to me, I will be I will well. What's welcome. oh? You'll have to share with me the email that you use for. I shall. And Android for Audible, so that yeah. way I can send it. Yeah, to I shall. He's. I've read some of his other stuff. I feel like I just know his name so well. And maybe somebody, maybe you, just told me all about it. And anyway, and I thank Jim Edwards was the uh, listener who shared uh, Shantaram with me. So thank you for sharing it with me. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, it was nice that he sh that he just sent me a co you know a, a credit for it. And then, yeah, that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's let's move on. You want to tell us about how you get to magazines and and the like? Well, you know, I know you're going to talk about the unlimited subscription that Apple offers, and mm -hmm. I do have that. Um, but I actually like the New Yorker app better. So you mm -hmm. get the New Yorker in. Uh, the unlimited subscription. But the thing I really enjoy about the New Yorker app is, well, I just think it's, it's really nicely, uh, nicely done. Again, I'm not logged in because, um, but I, I, I honestly, I don't have to log in, I guess, because you can download, uh, issues. I even have some issues on here. So maybe I am logged in. Yeah. The, the New Yorker, if, if anything else is well known for its covers, uh, covers, excellent covers, covers and, don't forget cartoons. So uh, the covers really have been timely. And, and what's nice about the digital edition, and I don't think you get this in the uh, Apple News Plus, but what's nice about the digital edition is occasionally these covers come to life, which is really, no way. really fun. Yeah. 
Um, so some of the covers are animated. I think this is one of the animated covers. Well, maybe not, but I think as I remember, it was going by. The other thing I really, I really like about this, and I'm ashamed to admit it, is there's a cartoons button. So you, the, car, the other thing New Yorker is really well known for is it's really wonderful uh, cartoons. Oh, actually, this is cool. So this is something you actually don't get. And I don't know how I'm going to show you this. You don't get in the uh, in the uh, print edition. This is an augmented reality Roz Chast cartoon. I think it's Roz Chast, where you look for objects in augmented reality and then you find them, and it tells you what it's thinking, which is hysterical. What it's thinking? What it's thinking. It's 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 the, the, it's animate objects. The secret. I'll show you the full screen. The secret. Thoughts of everyday objects presented in augmented reality. Oh. I'm sorry, it's Leanna Fink. I apologize, Leanna. But that's a cartoon. Now, these are the regular uh, cartoons. They're quite well known. <laughs> oh, Picasso's wearing the same shirt as you are, Micah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're quite well known for their, you know, cartoons. In fact, many people enjoy playing the uh, the caption contest in The New Yorker where they just give you the picture. That's in here as well. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> That's so sad, that one. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that Hillary? I think it is. I think it's Hillary. I think that's Hillary playing the guitar in the subway. This next little ditty is about how a seemingly harmless decision can end up destroying an entire campaign. That's it's called emails. Emails. It's Prum. still April Fool. Prum. It's just a joke, folks. Trump comes clean. All a big put on. Apologies for confusion. Amazed anyone believed he was serious. <laughs> Can you please just say fault, Gerald, and quit adding, it's not in our stars, but in ourselves? <laughs> oh, my anyway, God. I just, okay, I, okay, I love that the New Yorker. Good. I love the New Yorker. I also really think they're doing some of the best journalism, both about mm -hmm. the pandemic and now about Black Lives Matter. This is a, it, I think has become one of our uh, best national magazines. And it is a good argument, I think, for uh, magazines uh, surviving, print magazines surviving. It's just always fascinating. And as I said, the, the unfortunate thing about what you're going to show in a minute is you lose the production value of these really nice um, apps. So I actually pay separately even though I have access to New Yorker through Apple News Plus, I actually pay separately. Also, because I want to support them, they do fiction. Uh, I, you know, I used to love reading about uh, the goings on about New York. You know, the the theater <laughs> scene and mm -hmm. so forth. That's not mm -hmm. as interesting as it was. Um, you know, yeah, now it's more frightening. Yeah, a little more frightening. But um, I, I have always enjoyed, you know, pretending I live in New York, reading the reviews of. Uh, the cultural events going on, and then just the journalism is is fascinating. This is a really good piece about uh, a novelist, Maxine Hong Kingston, who's actually a friend of my mom's, dear friend of my mom's, who is should be better known. Oh, this is another thing that I really like. Um, Ooh, audio. Yeah, you can listen to the story, and it's not a computer generated Presents. voice. Profiles published in the print issue of the new yorker with the headline so they have the professional readers uh not in every article but in in many of the articles and i think that makes this also uh worth it it's a, it's a really well done app i believe i saw the new york times has started doing that as well yeah yeah farhad manju uh had read his own article yeah the reporter should read it that's i think a really good idea if the reporter you know doesn't sound crazy um so this is um <laughs> Of course, Farhad does not. Uh, this is uh, the New Yorker app, but you're going to show us how we can get much more, much more. Yes, um, I'm going to show you Apple News Plus, which, of course, is the uh, service that Apple had launched uh, in recent time and has not done super well, but is an option. Um, Apple News Plus is a $9.99 a month subscription service. And we were just talking about audio. Uh, and that, is, that seems to be something that they are working on as an added benefit of Apple News Plus. But News Plus magazines is one of the areas of Apple News Plus. Apple News Plus gives, gives you access to magazines, uh, some newspapers, 
and special subscription areas, special membership areas within uh, certain publications. So The Verge is one of those publications, or excuse me, TechCrunch is one of those publications that has a special section only available via Apple News Plus. So, uh, And as you is, can see, The New Yorker is there. So uh, you yeah, know, I'm really kind of paying twice because I, I get The New Yorker through Apple News Plus. Um, These are the magazines to which I am subscribed um, in particular. So I've got uh, GQ, The New Yorker. I need to unsubscribe from Bon Appetit uh, soon. I'll not do that now. The New Yorker, Out, Popular Mechanics, PopSci. And if I tap into one of them, uh, Popular Science, for example, um, you can see – And let me go ahead and close that side tab. You can see that it's not uh, – it's not quite the same as what you were showing. Yeah. In fact, maybe I should do I should do the new uh, the New Yorker so you, well, you can, can see. Do, yeah, head to head comparison. There's the yeah the exactly. Issue. So here's the cover, yeah. and then if I hit that next button, this starts to show. Uh, that's an ad. So this is and why what, basically a lot of the magazines in News Plus are PDFs of the magazine. They're basically mm -hmm. scanned in. They're not. They're, there's no production value in it. So that's fine. I mean, you get an unlimited number of magazines for a very small amount of money. But um, I, I just, I don't know. Some things I feel like I should uh, I should read. Support. Support. Yeah, as well. I, I agree with you on that. Um, that was the hope, by the way, of these, of these magazines to participate is that they would gain subscribers. And it's turning out that's probably not the case. Uh, it hasn't really generated a lot of uh, new subscriptions. No, for these magazines. it hasn't. And not a lot of revenue either, frankly. So. so that's News Plus magazines. Let me show you some other areas uh, that are also here. So these are different articles. For example, this one from Vanity Fair um, that have been picked out specific for me based on what I read, which that is kind of nice. Uh, so these articles would not be available to me if I was not an Apple News Plus subscriber. And then given my or based on my actions within Apple News in general, it will suggest different articles for me. Uh, they've featured different different issues. In this case, it's the Health Magazine. Recommend some issues that I might want to check out. And then here is an example that I was talking about. So the Los Angeles Times is a subscription service, uh, and I am able to access the LA Times articles within Apple News because of the Apple News Plus subscription. The only negative for me, and it's because partly because of the way I work with news, is mm -hmm. I want to be able to share articles from Apple News to the outside world, in particular uh, to our to Karsten and to our production uh, workflow. Mm -hmm. And every time you share a link in Apple News, it just is a link to Apple News. So it's just not very useful. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> that is one of the most annoying things. And uh, double that is the fact that sometimes so you can in some ways uh, get access to the original link to the article. But some publications have to based on the content management systems that they have in place and their website back end and all that kind of stuff have to have separate feeds, one that goes to Apple News and one that goes to their website or, or, you know, other distribution channels. And when that is the case, it's nearly impossible to get to the original article uh, from the Apple News link. And so that sort of lock-in that exists there, I do not like at all. And among my family, they don't complain because for them, it's just a lack of knowledge about sort of how that system is working. So, you know, they're used to if you tap on a link, uh, it pops you into Facebook or Twitter or Safari or wherever. So that jump to Apple News is not annoying. But anyone who has a little bit of knowledge about it does get annoyed. Oh, it's well, making me launch the Apple News app and have and to it go to it like there. Everybody in your family is using Apple devices. It's exactly. completely useless if you send it to somebody on an Android device, right? Yeah. What do they do? What yeah. What do they do? Or on a PC or I mean, I just—I'm not even sure what happens in that situation. I'm ashamed to admit. Yeah. I, I don't know what what pops up or what doesn't pop up. I'm gonna have to test that because I am curious now. What? How? What? What would you say? Uh, get an iPhone? <laughs> Does it go to a website that says, uh, "Sorry, you can't Maybe view this unless you have an iPhone"? I, I don't know. I have to say, the uh, 
Apple News has gotten better. The curation has gotten better. At first, it was really terrible. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's because I'm using it more. No, I'm not. I'm not using it at all. So I guess it's just <laughs> that they're getting better at curating it. But it's still too much of a walled garden for me. It's uh, I never used Microsoft's Windows News either. Uh, the special I, coverage uh, the, in the Apple News Spotlight. Yeah. So for COVID-19, I have actually found it to be an excellent resource. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, All right. Maybe it regularly keeps the, the virus map updated. It has the latest information about it. It provides all sorts of different sourced articles um, and, like I said, the latest data about what's going on. So I really like that, that's, that section of Apple News. And in fact, I shared this page in particular with my family and said, hey, I really recommend this is a place you go as opposed to a Facebook article that scrolls by. And that has actually been, they've said, has been helpful to them. Um, so I've, I've loved that that is a, a, an option available to them to be able to see uh, what's going on with, with COVID-19 versus, um, you know, other places where they might go. And then originally uh, the election stuff was interesting, but now who has time <laughs> to focus on that? Yeah, when... It's got taken a back seat. Well, yeah, I noticed exactly. though that they haven't done a Black Lives Matter section or a section about the yeah. protests. I'm kind of surprised at that actually. Um, um, don't wait. Here we go. Special they? coverage. I just haven't added it to my sidebar there. So here's uh, the spotlight. So, okay, this is important to understand justice. then because I don't see it on my sidebar either. So you have to specifically add that? Yeah, and I think you do – I'm trying to remember how I did that. I think share and then you choose uh, save story maybe? <laughs> no, it no feels, I can't remember how I it, did it. I f it feels – this whole thing – I'm not crazy about the AI UI. It also feels to me a little bit like I'm reading something at, in the line at the grocery store. It's just a little too razzmatazzy. I and, think that's a and, good way of putting over, it. Yeah. Overproduced, you know, and and I I don't know. Maybe I'm boring. I just I want something a little easier to digest, um, and a little more focused. This yes. just doesn't seem as focused to me. Yeah, maybe there's a. It's probably in the. Um, you probably can edit, right? Remember how I? Yeah, well, I tried hitting edit, and it doesn't let yeah. me change that up there. So I don't Disco know how I got at those the very two. bottom. Discover channels and topics. Does that? Does that give you anything? No, that's just channels. It's, it's really just magazines, really. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. Apple's not in the news business. No, they're not. And I feel like that hurts them a little bit. That's that's all. I when just, it comes to yeah, when it comes to this stuff, I yeah. I definitely agree. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how I got those other two to to pop up over there. Interesting. Honestly, you know when I'm looking for news i just use my uh my news reader i use um it's funny we were talking about this on twit I, somebody i think ian thompson says anybody any still use news readers and yeah yeah we do which one do you use this is called inno reader i-n-o-r-e-a-d-e-r -E -E and uh see you can see the difference in apple news it does it's not as pretty but what it is is the information i need right and uh and and if and it, it also works well with my workflow because when i star something it actually goes into our uh our uh, our system so and you can choose how you look at it i'm looking at it in the list mode but i could uh actually it should be in the magazine mode oh that's it the card mode if you like the more like the apple news thing but this is much more uniform and i'm looking for something i can scan mm -hmm. and then if i'm reading something and i go oh that's an important story we should uh, we should talk about it i can star it and it automatically goes into our workflow which uh I can't do that with Apple News, so that's a that's, that's a big deal. N O reader. I N O reader. I N O reader. Yeah, I didn't put it on my list because that's most. I think that's a special tool for people who, like me and you, who have to go through a lot of news and find stories to talk about. Yeah, I do, exactly. I do have to say we should give plugs to podcast clients. What's your favorite podcast client? What do you use? I think you and I have the same favorite, uh, unless yours has changed. Mine, uh, the one that I use is Pocket Casts. Yep, um, I, I've used uh, Apple Podcasts. I've used Overcast. I've used uh, Castro. I've used Pocket Casts. Pocket Cast is the only one that I've come back to after having tried other ones. Um, it is full featured. It 
I love the design of it. Um, I love the folks who make it. Um, well, you and know so him, all right? of those, He's Australian. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Russell's yeah. one of my good friends. Um, and so, of course, that that helps. But, but it I is... don't know him, and I do like it, too. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, there. so that's how you know. <laughs> and you can because you can set up an account. Actually, actually I'm not signed in, so it doesn't know my uh, preferences. I have to sign in on all my stuff today. But because you can make an account... It goes cross-platform, and that's that's really it's, nice. And it's so cross-platform. Yeah, it's Android. Yeah. It's uh, there's a Mac app. There's an iOS app. There's a web version of of uh, Pocket Casts. There's a version anywhere you want to be. Pocket Casts can be there with yeah. you, yeah. and that's what makes it great. And it not only just syncs your subscriptions, but it syncs the position of your current listening across those different services. Right. Really, really uh, uh, nicely done, Russell. Uh, it's, uh, you know, and the other reason I use I, Overcast is very, very good. And I know uh, Marco Arment writes beautiful software, but it doesn't do video. And right. that's a minor thing, but we do a lot of video. So I need something that can look at video. This show, for instance, mm -hmm. is silly if you don't watch it. It makes yeah. no sense at all. Silly beans. <laughs> Not at all. So Pocket Casts is, uh, is, I guess, both of our favorite podcast apps. Indeed. Tell me about uh, tune oh, in. I should show you People still listen to the radio? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, they do. Do you ever want to be on the radio again? <laughs> I would stop saying that. Uh, the radio is uh, big, baby, big. And actually, this is much more than the radio. Uh, tune in, and I pay for Tune in Radio Pro, although mm -hmm. they have a free version as well. And maybe the name's a little misleading because, yes, it's a lot of radio, but it's other things, too. For instance, I can listen to CNN or MSNBC or the BBC World Service for news. Uh, when the football games were were going on, I could listen to my 49ers. I'd get 49ers coverage, uh, listen to live games and so forth. And I can do it quickly in an audio fashion. Do you fashion. have constipation with belly pain, straining yes. and bloating that mm -hmm. keeps coming back? Yes. All of it. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> I've been meaning to talk to you about this. <laughs> I've been meaning to talk to you about your belly pain, bloating, and straining. So that was the ad in CNN. Some of the services do not have ads. Some do. Uh, some of the radio, all the radio stations uh, do. Um, but I just love the access to global stations. Notice podcasts as well. Um, but uh, to, unfortunately, uh, one of the things that has happened in radio, and it's really disappointing to me, um, is that um, the radio companies have become so big that they each have their own app now. So uh, iHeart has its app, CBS has its app, and as a result, TuneIn no longer has all the radio stations in the U.S. However, however, it does have a lot of radio stations, and globally, it's the best app for listening globally. Um, so the problem with some of these as uh, company apps is you'll only get the company stations actually and i'm looking at local radio here in the uh, bay area and it's pretty much got everything um so this is this is a really uh, nice feature i think the local radio you can also record shows and uh, uh that's something people used to ask me all the time i listen to the radio uh i need a vcr that's how old this question is for the radio <laughs> well this will also let you do it i think tune in it's 99 bucks for a year uh, but I play, I pay that gladly because uh, I just I just love being able to listen to radio all over the uh, all over the world. I think that's really great. The BBC is fantastic. If you want world music, actually I'm not logged in again on this one. But if you want world music, why not listen to a station in that country? Right now you're talking. Yes, I, I'm really a fan. Uh, tune in Radio Pro. Um, I think actually I'm signed in with Apple here, but let's see. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to mention that. I also should mention uh, Medium as another place mm -hmm. to go for, you know, and I have to say I was not a big Medium fan. I didn't used to be, but lately yeah, I but think it is really... it's doing well. And one of the mm -hmm. things that bugged me was you had to pay for it to really read stuff. Um, but I think it's worth five bucks a month. How to identify a smart person in three minutes. Well, should we try that? Let's just see. Let's try Now, it. I should point out, some of these articles are not brand new. They surface articles from as long as a couple of years ago. So I always look at the date when I'm reading an article, if it's a topical article. In this case, how to identify a smart person. Psh, 
that should be that's timeless. So there's two questions. Okay, uh, say you're on a Zoom call with your marketing team. Let's not. You need ideas on how to spend that last unallocated five thousand of your campaign budget. There are a lot of different directions you could go. Um, so this is how do you start? An easy, straightforward question is a quick way to reveal who's eager to prove themselves. So you oh. ask a dumb question. Remind me again, what does CPM stand for that most people would know in that call? And then you see who's blurting out the answer. That's over-eager responders, often so desperate for brownie points. See, I'm learning something here. I think this is, uh, this is really interesting. So... Don't Listening too, is more valuable than... Yeah, don't be too eager see. than bur blurting it out, right? Um, Over-eager responders are often so desperate for brownie points, they forget to consider whether their contribution is even all that valuable and skip the <laughs> fact-checking analysis and go straight for the <laughs> straight win. Straight for the win. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yeah, fact-check your CTPs. <laughs> I actually, the, the reason I wanted to mention Medium is because lately when I'm looking for something to read, uh, I found that I, it turns out this is a really good place. Now, I should mention that some of this stuff is not true. <laughs> like They even say that if you go start reading articles about the virus, they'll say, look, we're not vetting these. So, you know, consider this is not journalism. It's more like a right. collection of blogs. But I love blogs, and I love personal reading. And I just think some of the subjects, my skin, two years after giving up moisturizer. Honestly, that drew me in. I'm yeah, not going to lie. Based on my reading history, how do they know? How did they know? <laughs> You've been looking up skincare routines, Apparently, haven't you? I'm, you know? I'm not logged in. They knew you were looking over my shoulder. Uh, so I, I just think this is... A, a, I, was, I didn't like it for a long time. By the way, the other thing that they have is a lot of audio. So you can have playlists. They have media 10-minute listens. Yeah, extended plays. They have media magazine. There's a, author narrations. So they're Wait, doing more and more audio. Can I... That makes me curious if I can put audio on my posts on... Do you post on Medium? Medium. I have not in a long time. But if I could post audio, then I might do that. Well, let's see here. I'll this write is, and uh, then... Let's go to the author narrations. Um these are these are people who are narrating their own things. Most of them about drugs, ketamine, CBD, <laughs> psilocybin. Wow, maybe this is just all the same guy he likes to read. I don't know. No, no, it's all from Elemental. So that's the other thing they've done is they've really divided up into magazines now. Uh, Megan, that's who Megan Maroney now works for. Uh, one magazine on Medium or zero one zero. I'm sorry, on Medium which is a tech magazine. And I think that's another thing that's, uh, that's interesting that's going on in Medium. So I think, you know, for free, it's not that great. If you're willing to spend five bucks a month, I kind of, I had to give in because uh, Jeff Jarvis gave me, a, read me the riot act for not paying for Medium. So, well. Yeah. The problem there is, is there's so many things to spend money on. You know, how many subscriptions do you need? How yes. often do you read? You kind of have to pick and choose. I'm going to have to look into that audio thing. There. Yeah, that's interesting. That'd be good. Hmm. And then finally, I just want to mention Goodreads because books are great, aren't they? But how do you know what books to listen to? You heard, and this always happens, with, by the way, with audio listeners, audiobook listeners. When you get together, they go, what are you listening to? What are you listening to? So you heard Micah li literally send me a book. Um, Goodreads is, for, is a social network. It's owned by Amazon now for books, for readers. So... If you're looking for suggestions, you can follow people. Uh, you can read their reviews. Um, these are people I follow, and so I know um, you know what, what what kind of stuff I'm going to get. I just I think it's really great. You could put the books that you have read in here. These are you know books I've read, but then there's books I want to read. It integrates with your Amazon purchases, which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, there's a couple of books I put on my list. Uh, it knows what you're reading, <laughs> so. It shows your progress. Uh, I think this is, uh, it even includes, if you read on the Kindle, and I know you do now, your Kindle notes and highlights. So it integrates very nicely into the Amazon ecosystem. A social group, if, you, if you're the kind of person who says, gosh, I wish I were in a book group, or maybe you are in a book group, you're looking for a kind of a, a social group around your reading, Goodreads really, I think, does a great job. In fact, I always mean to put more stuff up there, you know, like, I got to update yeah. my Goodreads, you know. 
Yeah, I'm with you on that. Because um, the, the way that I get them added is that uh, Kindle will automatically, automatically. add to, to yeah. your Goodreads. Yeah. And uh, whenever you finish a book, then it will do so as well. But I wonder if uh, it works with Audible. Um, I don't know that currently. I can't remember. I can't remember. I'll have to uh, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, because that's the problem with we audiobook readers. Nobody thinks we read. They say yeah. you can't call it reading. It's listening. <laughs> Picasso Listen. says it's reading. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. So ha. So ha. All Picasso right. Picasso says it, and that means it's true. Actually, here uh, is the best, and it is in my Goodreads, the best audiobook of the last few years. I really love this George Sanders, uh, Lincoln and the Bardo. So you see, I gave it four stars. It tells you when you've read it. It gives you a description of the book, other readers, and all the reviews. Um, <laughs> except Ammon. He didn't like it. He said, don't buy into the hype. <laughs> but I thought, Okay, but not great. I says. thought, and it's great. It's This is a really interesting audio book because it's the cemetery uh, where Abe Lincoln's son is buried. And his son, he, Abe, comes to visit it. And all the other people buried there are ghosts. And it's the conversations of all the ghosts in this cemetery as Lincoln comes to visit Tad, his son, who died suddenly and uh, broke his heart. And it's beautifully written, but there's so many voices in it. And the audiobook has unique, different readers, some of them very famous, for each uh, book, which is really fantastic. This, uh, this is one of my favorite new novels of the last uh, decade, I think. It's really... Really good. Lincoln in the Bardo. Uh, it's George Sanders' first novel, although he's my age, so that tells you something. He's written quite a few short stories. A professor of... Uh, of uh, it's really beautifully written. I just... It's really beautifully written. So that's the beauty of Goodreads. Is you can, you know, you can see what your friends are listening to and, and the ratings they give it and so forth and so on. Okay. I think I'm done Alrighty. now. Yes. Tell me how to be private online. Oh, man, that is important, isn't it? It is. It's incredibly important, yeah. especially while we're all working from home. Well, and especially now that we know, and I, I haven't followed the progress of this bill, but Congress just voted, uh, at least Senate just voted to allow law enforcement to get your Internet history from your ISP without a warrant. That's well, nice. good. We love that. That's don't special. We? That's it. Yeah, it's special. special. We know that your internet service provider, and by the way, that's your you know your home ISP, but also your mobile ISP. They mm -hmm. they know everywhere you go. They see every site you visit. They this is no they're no strangers to your search history, to your browsing history. And the problem with all of that is, they're willing to sell it, and they do. Uh, and so that's why you want to use a VPN for privacy. You want to you want to use a VPN. Because when you're using that VPN, you emerge, you go right past the internet service provider and emerge into the world from the VPN server where many other people are using that same IP address so you're effectively anonymous. It's also, and I'm sure many of you know, virtual private networks are about securing your surfing. We're not so much at open at coffee houses, although we're starting to get there, right, at our open Wi-Fi access points. Uh -huh. As you start going out and about, you do not, you do not want to use somebody else's Wi-Fi unless you're using a VPN. So I, I think it's pretty clear v, we need VPNs. You need to use a VPN. The question then becomes, which VPN? And this is a really important choice because now they become, in effect, your ISP. They can see what you're doing. And so you want a VPN that does a few things. No logging. They don't keep track of what you're doing. They don't sell your information. Some VPNs, the cheap and free ones, will inject ads into your browsing. So you see more ads, not less. <laughs> not ExpressVPN. This is the VPN I recommend, the one I use, and I think you're going to love it. They developed a technology. They care so much about your privacy. You know, they've always, the privacy policy, and by the way, it's been independently audited, uh, says no, no tracking. But they care so much about your privacy, they went one step farther. They created something called Trusted Server. When you log in, when you press the button, and ExpressVPN's everywhere, iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, Linux, everywhere, even on smart TVs, and, and anywhere, you press the big button that turns on ExpressVPN, and uh, something interesting happens. It immediately spins up a new server, so I'll show you right now, um, I'm going to choose the smart location, which is nearby. It immediately spins up 
a server. Now, the trusted server is now spun up. It's running at ExpressVPN server location in Los Angeles, but it's, it's running in memory, and it's sandboxed. It can't write to the drive. So not only don't they log, they can't log. They, even if somebody came along and said, you got to log, the trusted server technology blocks it. And as soon as I turn off, and you saw how easy it was, by the way, to turn on the VPN, one button. As soon as I turn it off, that trusted server is erased from memory. That's mine and mine alone. And there's no record of my visit. It's gone. That's the beauty of ExpressVPN. True privacy. This is fast, too. In fact, I'm going to leave it on for the rest of the show, and you'll see how fast it is. It does, it's so fast. A lot of times you, you say, oh, yeah, i got to use a VPN, and then you go, but I'm not going to because I don't want to be slow. I want fast. You'll forget it's on. I'm leaving it on right now, and I will use it in the rest of the show. You won't even notice. Nope. The other thing I love, notice I can choose different locations. I can choose the U.K., that means I can watch Netflix in the UK and I can eat my fill of Doctor Who episodes or I can go to Kyrgyzstan and see what's on Netflix in Kyrgyzstan. That was a, <laughs> You can choose your location, which is fantastic. Now I'm in the docklands of the UK and my Netflix is going to be UK Netflix. That's completely legal, by the way. Netflix says, hey, it's okay. We generally don't recommend it because, well, HD video is not going to look good on a VPN Except it does, because ExpressVPN is so fast. I am now in England, and if I fire up Netflix, it'll be the Netflix UK. I can watch all the shows there. Jolly what? good. Jolly good. I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, it's so fast, I'm going to stay in England. Uh, I'm going to stay in England, and it's still going to be fast. Uh, ExpressVPN works so well that Wired, CNET, The Verge, pretty much everyone rates it number one. It's the best VPN in the world. And as I said, independent third-party audit of their policy, their privacy policy. They also checked trusted server. They said, yeah, that's exactly how it works. It's exactly what it does. And now it's not free because the free ones, they're getting their money out of you somehow. But it's not expensive. Less than seven bucks a month when you use our special offer. Go to expressvpn.com slash iOS today. So protect yourself and your privacy with the VPN that I use and trust, expressvpn.com slash iOS today. You'll get, when you sign up for a year, you'll get an extra three months. Expressvpn.com slash iOS today. And I'm going to stay in England for the rest of this show and just show you, and I'm going to talk like this too, because <laughs> that's what you do when you're when you go to England, in the dog like that. Yeah. yeah, You can be anywhere Especially in the world. The I love it. I love ExpressVPN. All right. Let's do the news now, Charlie. Or All should right. I call you Pablo? Uh, I suppose either will work. <laughs> um, well, up first we've got um, Apple's keynote. Oh, it's right around the corner. We're ready. You and I are going to do that, right? Yes. Yes, Next we are. So Monday. Yes, June twenty second at ten a.m. Pacific time. We will Apple, be sitting in these chairs, <laughs> right here, or this ball. And, uh, and and Tim Cook is going to be at the Steve Jobs Theater, which is excuse me, Tim Apple, Tim Apple, as Thank we you. as we all know him. <laughs> yeah, he'll be at the Steve Jobs Theater. Uh, but it, of course, WWDC, uh, just as a reminder, is typically a software uh, announcement event. It's uh, WWDC stands for Worldwide Developers Conference, and at this event, Apple will announce the next versions of iOS, watchOS, tvOS, macOS. Uh, did I forget any? HomePod all OS. OSs. All the OSs. Um, and every once in a while, there will also be, there, there can be hardware announcements. There are rumors. Um, there are rumors. There are rumors that there will be hardware announcements at this WWDC. Uh, but the big thing that we're going to see much coverage on uh, is definitely software, which means that we'll get, I'm sure, a nice uh, long conversation from Craig Federighi and uh, his team as they talk about what's coming in the next versions of the operating system. I've been thinking what, you know, they've been naming Mac OS after... California landmarks. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to think what will, the, you know, they had Mojave, Yosemite. The latest is Cat as Catalina. They had El mm -hmm. Capitan. What will the landmark be? And I figured it out. What is it? It'll be Mac OS Escondido. Or maybe just for short, Mac OS Escondido. 
Escondido. Maco is... Escondido. How do you like it? Do you like it? I like. Okay, I like that. Maco Escondido. <laughs> Maco Escondido. Where is that? It's uh, down San Diego way. Okay. I'm just thinking this would be great. Now they could do Mac OS Big Sur, or Mac OS Bryce, or Mac OS Death Valley. No, that wouldn't be good. Ooh, Mac OS Death Valley. How about Mac OS Barstow? No. There's. There is a thought that maybe they will finally add macOS to the other OSs in the sense that it will get a number and that's it. What? Uh, I know. What? You've got iOS no, 14 is the next iOS. You've got Ooh, uh, Apple. Mac OS 10 La Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's good from Scooter X there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Mac OS... Uh, Kim Schaffer, my phone uh, person on the radio show over the weekend, suggested uh, they name it after Weed, California. Mac OS Weed. Mac OS. No, that was already a joke that they made. Uh, uh, they made it? that joke. Before. Did they mm -hmm. make that joke? Oh, Yeah, Craig Federighi made that joke. How about Mac OS Hancock Park? <laughs> How about <laughs> Mac OS Petaluma? Oh, wouldn't we be proud well, a proud Petaluma. We'd be proud. No, I don't. I don't know. So you think that they still will continue to do these silly Heck names? Yes. Heck now, yes. why would they do that? Given that what iOS, would they do for wallpaper? Put a big fifteen or sixteen? <laughs> what do they, they? No. What do they do on iOS? It, they don't put a big thirteen in the background. It's just fun wallpapers that have like ink and weirdness. Yeah, but don't you like the El Capitan and the? You know, Mojave no. wallpaper. I love the... You don't like I the use, Catalina wallpaper? That's beautiful. I use uh, an app called Wallpaper Wizard that uses Unsplash But to, then you don't get the changing... The dynamic... Dynamic I, daylight oh. changes. I know. That's true, but I don't really well, care about that. We'll save <laughs> I this like for me. Mac Break Weekly because... But I that's am fair. very excited about iOS 14 because I think we're going to finally see widgets on the iPhone. I'm excited about that. And I have to say, and I, you know, I should probably mention it on this show because I've mentioned it on all the other shows, adding the magic keyboard to my iPad Pro 12.9 inch has turned this into, I consider, a very capable computer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the trackpad, the good keyboard, I really think I'm very interested in what they do with iPad OS because there's a few things... Um, you know, there's there's a, a, a circulating an iOS uh, or iPad OS wish list. Some people say fix the multitasking and stuff, but I'm curious what they're going to end up doing with this. I think this has actually been evolving faster than iPhone OS, right? The iPad. Oh OS. yeah, yeah, a thousand percent. Like these yeah. widgets here on the side, I love this. So and and you know the way the dock works, I love. I just I feel like we're really getting close to the perfect computer. Honestly, mm -hmm. yeah, and along with that, I'm looking forward to. Uh, apparently, allegedly, we are supposed to see uh, some. We didn't see as much coverage of HomeKit last year, and this year is supposed to include a lot of coverage on HomeKit, or more coverage rather than than in years past. And oh, yeah. along well, with you that, you and Matthew are probably very excited about that. Both very excited, of and smart then Smart Tech today. Uh, yes, we recorded our episode yesterday and started to talk about that and our, our sort of wish list for that. And then UWB, the ultra wideband chip, let's see some usage of that, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. be it air tags or anything, frankly. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Apple does with that chip that they've put in the phone and the uh, radar, or, or excuse me, LiDAR that they put into our iPads. I'm putting you in charge of the bingo card for next Monday. 10 All right. Pacific, Mike and I will be covering. The uh, keynote will play as we always do. We'll play the keynote with our commentary behind it, um, and we. I like to have a bingo card. The, I'll tell you. I'll be honest. The thing I'm most interested in is the ARM transition. There, rumors are strong that Apple will announce on Monday the beginning of the end of Intel chips in Macintosh computers. They already have some of the best chips in the world in the iPad and the iPhone. Uh, and I think now bringing those to desktop and laptop computing is going to be very exciting. So I want to hear about that as well. Yeah. So Monday. Uh, Monday we'll be doing it. We talked last week about... Speaking of rumors. 
this yes, one came rumors through. that become true. Uh, Apple, we, we heard that they were going to be making a, a monthly installment plan for your Apple card with uh, interest-free, essentially an interest-free loan on, on Apple products. So that's uh, the MacBook Air, or the MacBook, that's iPad, iPhone, AirPods even, AirPods even. And so you can get low monthly payments with zero interest, uh, plus 3% daily cash back uh, still with your Apple card. And then if you trade in your current device, then you can pay less money per month. So it all is part of the Apple card. And whenever you go into uh, pay for, you know, to buy a, an Apple product, then you can see here Apple card monthly installments. It shows uh, exactly what your monthly payment would be for how long. It shows uh, what your 3% daily cash back you still get, 0% APR. And then you can see here there's a little asterisk that shows, well, because of the weird zooming stuff that they have it messed up, but includes instant trade-in credit. So that Ooh. actually will show you what you would receive if you traded in your device. And then easily within the wallet app, you can see this is the iPhone that you've bought, you've paid this much so far, and then the remaining balance that's left, when your next installment is due, how much you've paid so far, et cetera, all right there. And then you can use Apple's uh, Apple Card features within wallet to sort of make the proper payments so that you don't have to pay uh, any interest on other stuff that you've paid for with your Apple Card the as you were doing it. that they announced this a week ahead of mm -hmm. WWDC tells me Go ahead, Leo. Buy hardware. the new iMac when it comes out. <laughs> yeah. I'm very tempted. That's one of the rumors is a beautiful bezel-less uh, iMac with a display much like the XDR Pro display. Um, but it will be pricey. I, I'm, I'm thinking I might need this deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Pro display is on there too. My God, I forgot about that. Well, that's um, – who knows? It's just rumors. But uh, again. Well, no, it's, it's not. It's um, – it's it's not rumors that it's yeah, uh, included in the. And sorry, oh, what's well, not buying rumored? It. Oh, buying it. Yeah, yeah. well, you, you can do buy need the a loan XDR to buy the display. XDR. Yeah, you could get the XDR display with Apple Card's monthly installments. Yeah. Uh, so $5, here's all the stuff that's available: dollars. iPhone, iPad, Mac, XDR display, Apple TV, HomePod, AirPods, Wait, the Apple. The iMac is not on there. They're it killing says iPad me. It. It says Mac, so that includes that include uh, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, iMac, oh, good. iMac God. Pro, Mac oh. Pro, and Mac Mini. <sighs> so you could buy a Mac Pro with your Apple Card and pay monthly no installments. But I <laughs> Come on, you get three percent cash iMac. back, it's practically free. <laughs> <laughs> You're evil. evil. I know. Man. Also, Apple Pencil, iPad keyboard, the Pro Stand, Apple's Afterburner card. Interesting. And then any Apple branded iPad cover or what's a Mac cover? Um, I don't know. Mac cover. Never seen that. That might be a hint at Mac some cover. stupid product. They might have a, they probably have a $500 cover for the Mac Pro, right? Oh, or for the MacBook Made Pro, maybe. They've got some sort of leather skin. sleeve or yeah. something. Yeah. That's dumb. Um, but anyway, yeah, from rumor to reality, that is uh, Apple's new card financing. I am so bummed out. I am so. Last week, I even told you how great iTunes U was. Oh, Last I know. Week. Isn't this sad? Isn't Last this sad? Week, and now they say they're killing that and iBooks author. Yeah, so what iBooks author and iTunes that? U are going away. However, however, are they being replaced? iBooks author? Yes. So, uh, in fact, Apple has a page where they talk about where it talks about the ways to go forth with the transition. So iBooks author will become a part of uh, this announcement shouldn't come as much a surprise. iBooks author transition into Apple Books author. It didn't have an iPad app. None of that happened. Um, iBooks author doesn't work. However, you can still use um, use the pages app, which oh. has the iBooks author stuff built into it now. And uh, pretty soon, Apple is going to create a tool that will let you open and edit iBooks author files with pages. I so care less about that. I don't know how many people use iBooks author. Alex Lindsay was so excited when that came out. And then it didn't seem like many people used it. But I am disappointed about iTunes U. This is the time people are at home. They're studying. 
I think they must, and they're saying end of 2020, and I think they must be 20, uh, 2021, right? Not yeah, so, so we got it a 20, year, but I think they must have something to replace that with. So th first of all, they point to Apple itself points to uh, classroom and schoolwork as the applications for the sort of iTunes U school side of things where they had uh, those those types of courses. But what they are telling folks to do is that any audio content from iTunes U should be put on Apple Podcasts. No, 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 and no. any text content should be put on uh, into the the uh, iBook store. It's extremely so, disappointing. I agree. Or the Apple Book Store, I guess, is now what it's called. Mm. Um, here is the let me add this. I'm gonna put this on my uh, iPad so I can show it. There's a support article that has all of the information about the transition and uh, tells you what you're going to do. Uh, the transition from iBooks author to pages. So uh, creating and sharing books there. But then also, um, where did I see it? There's a place where it talks about, I guess that wasn't the article. There's an article that actually has both mentioned within the support article. And it talks about uh, the transition for both of these uh, platforms. So both iBooks author and iTunes U. Um, oh, here it is. So Apple has been hard at work to create classrooms and schoolwork. And then if you publish public iTunes U content, until iTunes U is discontinued, existing content is still available publicly. Uh, but in the meantime, you need to use alternative ways. So you can use Apple Podcasts or you can use Apple Books. Otherwise, um, you can add a link to the content on iTunes U to whatever third-party service you're using. So really a bummer that there's not going to be that same uh, sort of location for all of this stuff because those great coding, we talked about this, especially yeah. those great coding classes were available in iTunes. They'll go to another, you know, they'll go to Coursera or EDX, but, but I feel like Apple, I think there's a larger trend of Apple kind of not doing a great job in education. It used to be mm. really important to them. Remember a couple of years ago, they had an event at a school to talk about education. I know they have classroom tools but this is a big one to be abandoning in. And they're not, it sounds like they're not replacing it. And putting your course in a podcast is not the solution. So I'm a little disappointed, a little disheartened by that. Uh, and I think Apple's making a mistake. Now, more than ever, they should double down on education and distance mm -hmm. education. They're, Google's going to eat their lunch. I agree. Maybe they already are. Maybe that's the problem. Um, it just seems foolish to me. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's uh, do some questions. I'm ready. Let's, yes, that works for me. Uh, so, oops, I did a boo-boo. Um, the first question comes from Patrick, and it is this. In this time of COVID-19, my Toastmasters club is meeting via Zoom. Nice. For those who may not know, Toastmasters is an organization to help build public speaking and leadership skills. A friend of mine is struggling to position her iPhone 11 Pro Max in the right position. She has an OtterBox Defender or similar case on her phone and can't remove it. So I can't remove it and does not want to remove it. She's looking to get a tripod but I'm not sure there is a tripod mount that would work oh. with the width and thickness of the case. I have one at home. I should have brought it in. Any recommendations? So you do have one. What is the, the name? Grip it. Grip it. Grip it. Grip it good. All right. Bop it. Grip it. Slap it. iPhone. It. it is, um, it's basically a clamp. <laughs> and it has a, uh, a, a variety of, uh, it's pretty wide. I think it would easily hold an otter box. And the idea is uh, not the drywall anchors, okay? The <laughs> <laughs> which apparently is the other uh, common use for them. Let me see. Yeah, I'm having trouble finding it. Maybe I got the wrong name, but I'm pretty sure it's Grip It. Um, gosh, see, I have it at home. Uh, anyway, it's uh, it's got a screw, just like a clamp, and it gets bigger and smaller. You couldn't put an iPad in it, but you could put an iPhone with a big case in it, and then it has the uh, the special quarter 20 thread that you go onto a tripod with. Honestly, I have a similar situation. I uh, take Pilates instruction by FaceTime. 
and the instructor needs to see me on mm -hmm. the floor and the mat and the gear. Uh, do the I don't need to coaching. see her so much, but she needs to see me. And for a long time, I was using the iPhone, and I was using a gorilla pod and various uh, attachments. It turned out really, it worked out better for me to start when I started using the iPad. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, she's using a laptop, not a phone, and she couldn't. She had to put the laptop on its side to get the right view. <laughs> it wouldn't rotate for her, but it does with when I'm sending video from the iPad. The phone goes, "Oh yeah, yeah, you're in you're in portrait mode," and so it has the right view. So it worked a lot better, or the laptop worked a lot better. The picture now, especially with these newer iPads, where the cameras are really basically on a parity with the iPhone, is good. And Did you, you have a stand. <laughs> you, you can't put it on a tripod. But for things like video conferencing, uh, I prefer this, frankly. And you could put this, as some people do, on a bunch of books instead of a tripod. But if you don't have an iPad, uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, uh, so Effin Dunn in the chat said, Redicam XL. Uh, I just sent you a link, R-E-T-I yeah, Cam I yeah. XL. And I think that I recognize that. Uh, but I'm not thousand percent positive. Yeah. Is that the one? No, nope. it's nope. Yeah. Uh, boy, I should have brought this uh, in with me. But it does look like this will do a pretty thick. This also has a screw. It'll do a pretty thick uh, thing. I, mean, I remember that because it had a really nice red handle. The it thing was red. You, yeah, you remember my yeah. grip? It? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was an Andy Anako recommendation, so I have to give. Oh, so I wonder if it's a, a Mac break pick thingy. I believe it was, but I must have the name wrong because uh, I, I don't see it. So, um, and well, and I was just going to recommend oh, the it second. Is. It's not grip it. It's grip. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> there's no I in grip it. Just like team, there's no I <laughs> in grip it. So grip. this is $30, uh, comes in fun colors. Uh, it is very nice uh, cast aluminum, so it's very light. And you can use, and I don't really understand why they did this. You can, that strap you can use a hand strap, but this is how I use it. And you see with a screw, you can get pretty wide open. There's still another half inch or so on this uh, iPhone um, that you could you could get at. And it, it will stand on its own, but it also has uh, the appropriate... Um, uh, threaded ho holes for uh, for a tripod. So this is the one. It's gripped, not it. Grip. No, there's no I in gripped. Smartphone hand gripped pocket tripod adapter iPhone hand grip and video accessory mount. <laughs> and there's an I, but there's only one I in gripped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true. I guess there is. <laughs> there's, there is an I in gripped, but only one I. You. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, so there you go. And I was just going to recommend the, the Gorilla Pod part of it. So Oh, I love our Gorilla Pods. And they make yeah. them in all different uh, sizes and hefts. I even have one that's designed for big DSLRs. It's got metal legs as big as... <laughs> but those are nice. In fact, I was using those for a while in the, in my, uh, in the gym because I could bend it around stuff. So I could, you know, move, easily move around stuff. But it turns out the iPad and the speakers are better in the iPad. I just think the iPad is a is a better choice for video conferencing if if you have that as an option. Especially I agree. especially the twelve point nine is really fabulous for that. And being able to adjust it, yeah, and just as you need to yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people do end up putting it on a on a on a bookshelf or something like that or books, so you get because you don't. Little tip, little tip for your next uh, Zoom conference: never have the camera below you. No one wants to be up there. Always have it a little bit above you. Then you don't get the double chin. You get a nice, all of our cameras, and as I get older, they're getting higher. They're all slightly above my eye line, and they're getting higher because the chin's getting lower. Pretty soon it's Pretty up soon in the I'll corner. Like this. Hi, welcome to the show. No. Just I'm a little, a little bit higher than the eye line. That's what you want. Uh, now, this last week, we had the question. Uh, it was Andy from South Carolina who was asking for help with contacts syncing. And Carl from Phoenix, Arizona, wrote in and said, Hey, on your last show, you had a listener write in about contact sync issues. He should try going to, and we'll do this together here the contact uh, sync store setting. Yes, exactly. 
settings. Yeah. Oh, you got an update, looks like. It does. And then contacts. And then uh, default account. And then make sure iCloud is selected as the default account on all oh, devices. Oh, good thinking. This, he says, this fixed the issue I was having. And it was the same issue as what uh, our friend from last week, Andy, was having. So make sure th – and this is kind of what I was talking about where – you may be pulling contact information from other places instead of your iCloud account. So by making sure that the default account is set to iCloud on all of your devices, your iPad, your iPhone, et cetera, that should, in theory, fix the sync issue because it will pull from iCloud first before it goes and pulls from other places. And it will add contacts first to iCloud before other places. And as you can see, I have the same – I've checked iCloud. And if you're signed up with Google – and you know what? You may want to use – Google's calendars, but you got to pick. The idea is pick one and pick mm -hmm. the right one. And I think you're right. iCloud's best. Although I, because I'm all in on the Google Calendar, I'm gonna just try it for a while, see what happens. Oh uh, boy! To use Gmail. Yeah. Noivus. Well, <laughs> but I don't. I don't want my default calendars to be uh, iCloud because I want them, to, you know, to be able to be every where I am. And a lot. I don't all use uh, iOS stuff. So. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. For you, that makes sense. Did you sure. avoid, uh, I, it looked like you had that 13.5.1 update on your phone there. Did you avoid uh, doing that? This is my sits at the desk phone oh. for the show. So last gen model. I'll tell you why I ask. Question from uh -huh. uh, our, uh, our audience, my wife. She said, any reason I shouldn't upgrade to 13.5.1? She said, I'm hearing people's, I've been hearing maybe that it's not good. It is a, it, the fix is really just to break the jailbreak, I think, but there may be other yeah. fixes in there. I have, but I know of no reason not to do it. How interesting Some because people have I said, got I've the heard, same question from yeah. my SO. Yeah. Isn't that funny? I've heard the battery life. Some people are saying the battery life goes down. I haven't experienced that at all. So. I've not had any issues with Me upgrading. Neither. So my, my actual, my day phone, so to speak, uh, I updated it immediately and it, I've not noticed any issues. Right. My iPad is updated to the latest version right. with no issues. Right. Um, I just had not gotten around to updating that one. So yeah, I recommend it. It's got bug fixes and stuff. Um, but yeah, Sebastian asked me the same question. Should I update to this? And I thought, I, I actually, I stopped and I said, what, because I, I was curious and I said, what would be the reason to not update. You know, what is your concern about updating? And he was worried that it would break something. And I said, well, it's updates are typically meant to fix something, and right. I haven't heard about it breaking anything. It's not unreasonable, though, because anytime exactly. you upgrade yeah. the operating system. So it's probably prudent for people to ask. And so that's why Absolutely. I'm asking, you know. Yeah, I think that it is. And, and that's, I was very careful to not say, oh, why would you even ask that? No, I, I wanted to know sort of yeah, where that it's, it's fear had come from. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it totally makes sense that there is that concern right. there. I'm looking uh, we'll at my, say, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Your night phone? I'm looking yes. at my night phone. No, it's up to date. That's the iPhone SE. It's up to date, too. Gotcha. That's, that's uh, cool. Let's go ahead and move on to our app caps. Oh, hat time. Time to get on a juicy little hat. Let me go and see where it's at. Time to wear a hat for all. It's app cap time in America. Oh, wait. Got it on backward. Oh, we are a party couple. Yes. Uh, Longtime listeners of the show will remember that this was one of the first hat app caps I wore as a uh, host it's of, a little of thread iOS. Bear. You got a little thread sticking out there. You gotta, you're going to have to trim it up. I might, you might have to bring it over to the house and I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll you'd sew. sew it together again. Get a little, that's so cute. Micah is a, <laughs> is a daisy, but instead of the place in the middle of the daisy... Where the pollen would be, the bees are going to go to Michael's fa Micah's face, straight to his face. They will give me a little kiss, yeah. a little bee kiss. And I am wearing, a sh unaccountably, a Chicago, <laughs> I guess it's the Cubs, right? I think or they're the, the Cubs, bears? yeah. Jester oh, hat. God, you're right. Are they the Cubs? Wait, Cubs are bears. <gasps> Cubs are little bears. 
Shoot. <laughs> or is it the Chicago Little Bears or the Chicago Bears? <laughs> is it the Big Bears or the Little Bears? Uh, chat room will tell me. I'm sure yes, they, they know. Will, I'm sure. Why, though? Why do we wear silly Why? hats? That's what everybody we, is always asking. Is it Dub Bears? Dub Bears. Dub Bears. Uh, we wear silly hats to honor our app picks of the week. These are the apps that we want people to know about, to check out, and, uh, you know, apps that we, we get joy or interest out of. What's your um, app, Michael Sargent? My app this week, I'm so excited about this app. Uh, we had talked before about how Signal... I'm lightly choking myself to death, so I'm just going <laughs> to make an adjustment there. Um, the daisy's we, really strangling you. <laughs> yes, it really is. Um, we had talked before about how Signal has a feature now that lets you take photos anonymously. Yes. Uh, to take photos and then it would automatically blur Anonymize them and you could them. send them out. Yeah. Um, now... There is an app out. It's called Anonymous Camera, mm. and it's available for free uh, with a $1.99 purchase that I'll talk about in a moment what that does. But for free, you can download it, and it does on-device. Apple has uh, included some uh, – what is it called? It's it's a, a special version of machine learning and AI that's uh, computer vision. Has some computer, computer vision APIs that can detect and track faces. And so – and this happens on device, locally on your device. Uh, in fact, the app says, go ahead and turn on airplane mode if you want to. We'll show you that this is all happening on your device. So the problem with apps – in the past is that when you took the photo, it would upload it to the server somewhere, do the calculations there to find the face, blur the face, and then send the, the you know, the render the version back to you. If you want to have a completely private experience, you should check out Anonymous Camera. Oh, look at that. So, it's got a square. Right now, it knows it's your face, even though you're the center of a daisy. It knows. It does. And so I want to talk about all the different features because they've done this so well. There are so many great features. Up top on the left is a location button. If I tap that, it immediately removes the location from the metadata. If I tap the button on the right, it removes the timestamp from the metadata. Uh, uh, so I can adjust those at any time to include or not include location. Then on the bottom, there are three options. There's no filter. There's blackout uh, or solid is what they call it. And then there's blur. Uh, this works for both the front facing camera and the back facing camera. And if you use the back facing camera, you can also turn on a feature that lets you blur out a body entirely. So it's not just uh, the face, but you can choose the body. And look, I'm moving this, this phone around quite a bit. I, I wish I could Maybe I can show, yeah, how much I'm moving it around. And it is perfectly keeping track of where my face is, uh, depending on what I use. Now, let's go into the settings. When I swipe up, here's where I can choose between head or full body. And again, you can see only available on the back facing camera is the full body. But the solid can be a yellow circle. It can be that um, sort of black and white uh, computer fuzz. It can be just a black circle or a white circle. Uh, so you have that choice there. And then it's not just for uh, a still photo. You can also turn on distort audio and record video with it. So it will distort the person's voice along what? with. Yes. Does along it make with, you sound like a hacker? So, so that way they don't know no. who you are. Uh, then you can also turn off metadata from this uh, screen as well. And then if you pay for the uh, upgrade, you get two features. You can turn off the watermark and you can turn on a feature called split screen that I'm going to talk about in just a second. When you pay uh, the $1.99 in-app purchase, all proceeds from Anonymous Camera, this app, uh, are donated to Black Visions Collective and Unicorn Riot for the first month of this app being on the App Store. So right now, it's free with all proceeds for the pro version going to those two, uh, those two options, which is really cool. Now, split screen is a great feature that I think was another clever thing that they did where, okay, so I'm going to turn on blur and... It may be that I am okay with having my face shown, but the people that I'm with don't want to have their faces shown. So watch what happens when I move the camera from the side to past the line. Anybody who's on wherever the side of the line is, I get to choose. Oh, that's I want so this cool. portion of the screen blurred or not blurred. Oh, that's so really I could cool. take 
a selfie and I can show myself, but keep everybody else anonymous very nice. uh, who's on the other side. I think a very nice idea. Yeah. So that's, that's the split screen feature. This is anonymous camera. Uh, it is excellent. Again, everything happens locally on the device. Um, I'm really happy that this app exists and, uh, I think that it's, well, it's just well done. Uh, they, they, they thought, I think, of many of the features that folks would be considering uh, for having an anonymization camera feature, both in odd or excuse me, in still and video formats. Um, so, yeah, you should definitely check out anonymous camera free with a dollar ninety nine in app purchase. It would be nice if like uh, this became uh, kind of the standard, like if you're taking pictures at a, you know, a school or you're doing a selfie, they just blur everybody else because they haven't given permission. Exactly. Uh, you know, give some people some privacy. What do you think? I agree. Yeah. How hard is that? How, come on. How hard is, well, now it's easy. Exactly. And what do you got for us? I'm so, really excited about this. I don't know if we need another it. camera in the world. <laughs> But, we do. Uh, this one's so fun. It is cool. This is from uh, Adobe. It's their Photoshop camera. They've always had a camera uh, built into Lightroom that you could use, but this is a standalone camera. It's designed for the iPhone. So uh, it goes by default, it goes into uh, uh, selfie mode, which is interesting. Um, I, you know, you'd think with Photoshop, they'd be really targeting uh, photographers who are taking right. pictures. But no, I think they're targeting the kids, the youngs. The, a lot uh, of influencers. Uh, the influences. A lot of filters. There's a very good portrait uh, filter, uh, which doesn't unfortunately blur my hat, but does. Uh, and there's, the UI is very easy. I can swipe between different. So there's a, a bunch of different styles, and I can swipe between them. There's some obviously funkier <laughs> styles, pop art styles and so forth. And then, what? I don't know if I can change that text. You uh, do have some some sliders in here that will not change the background, but will change you. Um, and then, uh, let's see. I can also show you some. There's art filters that will make you really look old and grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or your significant other can be pencil drawings. There's also a weird Billie Eilish filter, which... Yeah, um, they've paired up with some celebrities yeah. for special now, filters. Now, you're a young person. I don't know. This must be her album style or something. Maybe. I think it's just her... What do they call it? That's just her... Um, God, what is it? the term? Her do mojo? I ever sound old? It's her. No, it's her aesthetic. It's her aesthetic. Is a little green, little green men. It's my aesthetic. Ah, it's weird. Yeah. Okay. So um, those are some some pictures I took with it. Um, but there's quite a few filters, and as far as I can tell, now I signed in my Adobe account. So, but as far as I can tell, it is free. Uh, mm -hmm. There's scenery, so there is some stuff that you might want to use as a real photographer. Uh, this is a, spe a specific sky filter, and you can see it says "find the sky," and it's actually trying to put the sky in my lights up here, as you can as you can see, which <laughs> is struggling a little bit, struggling because it's not actually the sky, but you could do that. It also this is Reverie, which will make everything kind of noirish. All of these are free. I think if I press, I'm suspecting if I press, oh yes, the library, the lens library, there are additional lenses, and you can create lenses. And I can have Billie Eilish wings. That's pretty cool. Let me add the Billie Eilish wings. Nah, these, those are free. And it should be because they're promotional. I love the idea, though, of being able to put wings on people. So <laughs> I'm hoping that Adobe sees this as not a revenue generator, but as, oh, super size. Cloudy with a chance of cheeseburgers. Change up a mundane scene with, let me add that one, with food. Put some food in there. And I mean giant chickens or popsicles, <laughs> or apples, or all sorts of things. So there's a certain surreal quality to this new Photoshop camera that's that's kind of intriguing. Here, let's see. Oh, this is for taking pictures of food. Let me see if I wear the new ones. Supersize, here we go. Let's put some, uh, find a sky. Again, it wants the sky. So this is really more for uh, outdoors. But it's going to put some giant, there's some apples in my sky. See, I have apples floating behind me. Oh, neat. Yeah. Or uh, there's a giant bumblebee up there in the, in the clouds. <laughs> or, or a fudgesicle. So I don't, I don't really get it. But I'm not, I'm not a ute. 
I do love the ideas of getting some Billie Eilish wings on me here, though. That's that's pretty dang cool. Ooh. Look they at those so wings. nicely with my, uh, my Chicago Bears hat, my Jester's hat. So free to try. You already have probably a dozen cameras on there. It does have the ability, just like a Snapchat filter, to do a still or a moving a video. And some of these filters, like the Billie Eilish filters, are actually moving, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I like the art filters. I think they're kind of fun to play with. You know, there's a lot of programs like this, um, and there have been for years, but this one is from Adobe, and I, I'm just hoping that Adobe takes advantage of this. Um, you can take lenses out, you know, manage them and so forth. It takes advantage of this to do something new and interesting and different. It's it's certainly a good start, and obviously the capabilities are there. And they do have quite a few filters, including a studio light filter, a glam filter. Um, so if you're a photographer using your smartphone to uh, take pictures, it's probably worth uh, looking at. Uh, free from Adobe. Um, oh, and they also point out, the chat room does... We'll go back to my, go back to my uh, camera here, and uh, get the food, the giant supersize stuff in there. Uh, once you've got uh, something in there, like a giant hamburger, you can pinch and zoom. Whoops, they said I can pinch and zoom. Oh! <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Oh, that's cool. When the hamburger hits your yeah, eye like, like a, a big, big pizza pie. Yeah, that's oh, you can see Adobe. the So, you know, I'd figure Adobe would throw in some interesting little uh, mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. right? That's an export yeah. to Photoshop Express button. Yes, you're right. It is. How did you know that? You're so smart. I've been playing around with I can it. also do the shadow, the highlight, the clarity. Nothing's going to save this picture, though. Uh, <laughs> the vibrance. Let's whoa! Turn oh my, my hair vibrant. Crank uh, up that vibrance! Wow, that's cool though. I didn't know if I didn't know if this photo was. Uh, what? It, well, I I did I did a photo that's kind of grungy. Oh, let's see. Um, let's show us. Maybe, oh, that's cool. When did you start? Like, you knew all about this already. Yeah, that's why I was so excited that you chose it as an app cap. Because you've been playing with it. Yeah. Cool. Because uh, I definitely wanted to cover the anonymous one. Perfect. But, um, yeah, that's Perfect. one of the neon features. And I took that like I took that in a mirror and it just found my body and then put me in that scene. So the all of that was added around me, which is kind of cool. Let me play with uh and then this one too. Play. Yeah, see it's cool. It's a nice it? portrait. Yeah, portrait photo. I like it that I can make the burger move around. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I bet in certain scenes that would look cool. If you took a landscape photo and then added giant hamburgers oh, to it, that could be Oh, yeah. I wonder if I could take my existing camera roll and uh, let's add some giant hamburgers. Can I add some giant hamburgers? Tap to see suggested scenery lenses. Oh, it even knows. But no, I don't want to do scenery. I want to supersize it. <gasps> I can! <laughs> I can add hamburgers to existing photos. Moreover, I have total control over hamburger size and portion size. So, and I can I can move them where I want them. Portion oh size. my god. I've got giant hamburgers. Okay, now this is fun. Oh, what what's that? Chickens? There's Chickens a giant and chicken. eggs. I'm in chicken and egg day. Look at that. Perfect for Petaluma. Which came first? It's the butter and the eggs. <laughs> um, oh, you gotta you gotta do it just right. That's wild. So you yeah, you have a lot. Whoa, fudge sickles and a mountain. Oh yeah. Now that, we're talking. This was such a boring photo. I'm really <laughs> now happy. Now it's got fudge sickles. Now it's got fudge sickles. <laughs> I am super happy. I learned that in my uh, photography class. If you How have a boring photo, put a fudge sickle on it. Put a fudge sickle on it. Yeah, it's like was that a Beyonce it. song? It was. If you if love you it, like put it, a fudge sickle in it. Then should have put a fudge put sickle. Should have put a fudge sickle in it. Should have, would have, coulda. That's so awesome. How do I save this? I want to save it. Uh, it's the share button, share bottom button. Yeah. or the bottom right, I think. So Save I the, the camera button. roll, yes, sir. Dang. My fudgesicle photo. My fudgesicles. My fudgesicles. 
Bologna has a first name. It's F U D G E. They gave us this as a treat since they're getting rid of Flash Player uh, fully and officially. <laughs> Thank now. you. That's the treat. Uh, yes. I'm a little annoyed because uh, they've changed their. Uh, they used to have a photographer subscription that gave you Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, and they've kind of changed that around for ten dollars a month. So uh, anyway, long story. They'll be, <laughs> they'll be extracting more money from me all the time. But this one is free. And, you know, as far as I could tell, the, the filters were free, too, which is kind of neat. Yeah. yeah. I think those first ones are available for free. And then after that, maybe we'll require we'll a membership. Yeah. Uh, oh, to a OK. Well, I do have a membership. So maybe that's what I get for my $10 a month. Creativity <laughs> for all, they call it. There you go. Thank you, Daisy. You're so welcome, cub slash bear. I'm a bear. I've been informed. Right. This is the bears. I'm You're bear welcome, gesture. bear. We do iOS today on a Tuesday morning, bright and early, and I mean bright and early. Oh my God. Bright and early. <laughs> We're supposed to start at 9 a.m. I got here half an hour late. I'm sorry. 9 a.m. Pacific. That's noon Eastern time. That would be 1600 UTC. We do it for you, you Australians, so you don't have to stay up late to watch That's the show. Why. That's why we do it. Uh, if you want to watch live, you can go to our website, twit.tv slash live. There are audio and video streams there. You choose one you like. If you're, you know, listening at home, you also can ask your Amazon Echo or your Google uh, Assistant, or I think even your Home Hub, your HomePod will do it. But you can say, play Twit Live. Sometimes, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, just say, try it. See what happens. Maybe you'll get something. Maybe you won't. But if you want, you can do it that way, too. Or go to twit.tv slash live. If you are doing that, go to the chat room because they're chatting along in real time. And helping us out. And big time helping us out. Uh, just that's irc.twit.tv. Um, we also have on-demand versions, of course, after the fact. You go to the website, twit.tv slash iOS or YouTube or use Pocket Cast or Overcast or whatever cast you like cast. to subscribe. Cast Cast. And uh, you'll get it every single Tuesday the minute it's available. As soon as the editors are done polishing it up. And this one needs a lot of polishing. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, I don't know what our editors' names are. I just call them all Kevin. It works pretty well. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Most of the time it is Kevin. Yes, yeah. that part is true. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, or whoever you are, for fixing this show. Uh, Micah, if people had questions for us, how would they mm -hmm. get those on the uh, show? They send those to iOS today at twit.tv. And uh, we've got some good ones uh, for next week. So good. looking forward to it. So thank you. But don't stop sending them because we can use them. Yes, always. Always, always send it. Always. More. Well, I'm going home. I'm going back to bed. Uh, my day is done. But uh, Micah, you get back to work, okay? <laughs> okay, because back break is so... No, wait. Oh, wait a minute. I have to stick around. Oh, well. <laughs> back break. This is our Mac morning here on it is. the Twin Network. Thank you, Michael Sargent. We'll see you next time on iOS Goodbye. Today. Goodbye. Hey, folks, I'm Micah Sargent, host of Hands on iOS right here on the Twit Network. If you've got iOS devices or watchOS devices or tvOS device, any kind of Apple mobile device, you are going to want to check out Hands on iOS. It is the best way to make the most of those devices. I walk through tips, tricks, and everything in between, plus answer your questions. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash HOI.